Welcome to Working with PhotoEtch Part 2, Folding. Folded PhotoEtch adds a whole new dimension to intricate detail parts that can really help bring your models to life. In this episode of Working with PhotoEtch, we'll show you how to fold PhotoEtch parts. You'll learn folding by hand, using knife blades, and using a folding tool. Folding PhotoEtch is one of those advanced techniques that can seem really intimidating before you try it. Luckily, though, like most other modeling techniques, the anticipation is far worse than the actual doing. Typically, parts are laid out so that you fold toward the fold line. Occasionally, they'll fold the other way, but the instructions will let you know that. I won't be going over cutting the parts from the fret and filing off the attachment tabs. If you're unfamiliar with working with photo etched parts, check out Volume 1, The Basics. If a part has a very simple design and incorporates wide fold lines, you can easily just fold it into shape by hand. Just hold the piece in both hands and fold. That's really all there is to it. Generally, you'll glue the edges together to provide strength. I use this handy-dandy yarn darning needle with the loop cut off as an applicator and put a bit of medium thickness superglue on the seam. Then I hit it with some accelerator so I don't have to hold it very long. Paragraphics has introduced our easy fold feature for items that can sometimes be difficult to fold even using a tool. Using conventional fold lines, items such as these girders have a tendency to fold at the webbing rather than at the fold line. With easy fold though, they can easily be folded by hand. Just like other parts, grab it, twist it, fold, and you're done. Sometimes a part is more intricate or the fold line isn't wide enough, so folding by hand isn't an option. This is especially the case on very thin material. If you won't be doing enough folding to justify buying a specialty tool, you can jerry-rig one using a straight edge and a razor blade. Razor blades are sharp, so be careful working with them. You have been warned. Place the straight edge so that the edge is right on the fold line. Now, slide the razor blade under the part and rotate it upwards. Make sure to push the blade all the way under the piece up to the fold line, or you can end up kinking it, like this. Oops. Generally, you can flatten out a misbent part, but if you do this too many times, the piece will end up breaking. To flatten out a part, you can use a wallpaper seam roller or even the round handle of an X-Acto knife. If you're folding very small parts, or ones where other detail is in the way, you can substitute smaller X-Acto blades for the razor. With this landing bay girder set for the Mobius model's Battlestar Galactica, it would be tough to get a razor blade in place or fit the part into a folding tool, but a number 14 blade works just great. There are several purpose-made folding tools available. While they're relatively expensive, if you're doing more than just a few folds, you'll really want to pick one up. I'm going to demonstrate using the Etchmate 3 from Mission Models, but the technique is basically the same for any of the tools. These tools generally come with two types of folding dies, a long straight die and a series of short teeth that are ideal for smaller details. The long straight die is perfect for folding longer items like girders. Unclamp the die and raise it enough to slide the girder into the gap. Align the fold line so it's at the edge of the die and tighten down the tool's clamps. Now take the blade that comes with the etch made, or whatever tool you're using, and slide it all the way under the edge. Now just rotate the blade up and the fold is done. The small teeth work exactly the same way. First, you need to reverse the die so that the tooth side faces the work surface. Now, insert the part under the tooth that fits it best and tighten down the clamps. The same as before, slide the blade under the part and rotate upwards. Repeat as needed to complete the part you're working on. Sometimes a part has multiple folds that will interfere with each other or with the tool itself. You can use the teeth to hold the part so that you can do the remaining fold without any interference. 
you can use the end of the tool the same way. This way you can do basically every fold without having any problems with tool interference. One other trick for the folding tool is using it backwards. If you have a folded area that reverses on itself, it can be nigh on impossible to fit it into the normal working surface. In this case, simply turn the die around and fold from the reverse side. That's really all there is to it. If you can fold paper, you can fold photo etch.